Did you know this anvil weighs 6,500 pounds? No kidding. That's right. And you know another thing? What? I can move it with one finger. You've been out in the sun too long, sweetie. Come sit down in the shade. <laughs> Featured in the Harlan Daily Enterprise. Or put pennies on the railroad track? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They'll make a penny about that big, but you don't want to run and grab it, it'll burn a hole through you. <laughs> Spray Earth a 30 pound hammer. Oh my. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We had a cousin, he, he and his wife dug graves for a living, yeah. Yeah. and she come by and grabbed that thing, picked it up like you oh, pick that little. My. I patted her, I said, I want to hire you to work for me. No she said, I can swing that thing a little bit. I said, I know you can, I'd right? <laughs> seeing you pick it up. <laughs> Oh, we've had people come Play to earth music. as a hillbilly as me, but they'd talk so proper, you know, they'd trip over their tongue, you know. Hey, folks, we're in Bledsaw, Kentucky, in Harlan County at J.D. Napier's, and he is a genuine blacksmith, and J.D. is going to tell us about this giant anvil and tell us about blacksmithing in Harlan County. And, folks, this is Mr. J.D. Napier a genuine blacksmith right here in Harlan County, lives in Bledsaw, lives here his whole life, born next door. When you raised up next door, you was born at the... Pine Mountain Settlement School. Pine Mountain Settlement, they had a hospital there. They had a hospital at that time. Sure now, how long, Mr. Drapier, have you been a blacksmith? Since I've been seven years old. Seven years old. And I'm 73 and, right now. Yeah, he's been a blacksmith. Wow. Well, tell, tell us a little bit about it. Do you sell your stuff you make here? We sell everything we make here. Wow. Right here off your front porch. <laughs> right off the front porch, 99% of it at least, you know. We're going to show you around his place here in a minute, folks, because he has got a beautiful place. Got the water wheel out there and, and got, the, got the anvil we're going to talk about, 6,500 pounds. 6,500 pounds. That's right. We're going, we're going to talk a little bit about that. What all do you make? Uh, we do about 50 things in blacksmithing. We make hooks, we make ladles, copper and steel ladles, and uh, so many I just can't think of it, you know. <laughs> a whole bunch of stuff. Horseshoes? Make triangle dinner, but I made one horseshoe, one horseshoe. just to say that I did make them, you know. <laughs> I've done that at a crash show. Gave train, a baby. beautiful gift to my wife here. Look what he gifted to me that I just will cherish forever. Look at this. Look at that. Look how pretty the work is the on that. Look at the detail of this. Look at that. Look at that. Look how pretty that it's is. It's twisted into. Uh, now you call this That's a talented. Rubik's cube. I call it a Rubik's cube or a DNA twist. Wow, that is. I so first cool. named it DNA, and then later on I found out it's called Rubik's cube. You know. No, that probably hold up a hundred pounds. That is, yeah. yeah. If you're not gonna no, find that at the store. Yeah, probably. Yeah, you're not. You're gonna. You're not gonna find anything this strong at Walmart. No. Thank you, sir, so much. I, that really now, J.D.'s want to tell us a little bit uh, about his life. Who, who taught you blacksmithing? My grandfather, George W. Napier. Wow. And George you said he lived on the hill right here he behind us? on the hill right up there. Yeah. Right now, up tell there. me the story when you was a little boy. When I was a little smoke. boy, about six and seven years old, seven probably, I'd see the smoke up on the hill there. I'd let off a run and I wouldn't stop till I got this blacksmith shop. <laughs> <laughs> now, we had other cousins also, uh, but now they were, they, their grandfather was a, a, a stonemason. So they wasn't interested in the blacksmith, they was interested in the stonemason, you know. So, so you, I was the only one in the whole family interested in so the black. So you took a great love. I took a great love for the black. And you never just stopped. Yeah. yeah. So you <laughs> did it. You did it since you're seven years old with a few I breaks. I assisted him. I helped yeah. him. Yeah. Wow. I would watch the farm yeah. and the farm and get yeah. the steel good and hot and get it out for him. Wow. Help him hold it and while he'd hit it with a hammer, you know. That is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> with a few breaks and going to the big city to. to uh, make a better living. You said you went to Chicago for a while? Went to Chicago for a year or so, a couple of different times. Then I went to Indianapolis for a year or so, you know. Now, I liked Indianapolis better because I could, uh, it was pretty close to the country. Yeah. I could get out and fish and stuff like that. Chicago, you just, all you do there is drink and party and that's it, you know, work, you know, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. drink, party, and work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So you just didn't stay long, you just had to come yeah, back. Yeah, I'd save every time I could and stay about a year up there and then I 
I guess we're homesick. Get back home, I guess we're homesick. <laughs> I about die. Yeah. yeah. Mountains call you back home. What That's calling the same me home? Stories buddy. I heard my dad say about Michigan. He had to get back home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You may leave Harlan, but you know what? A lot of time they come back. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can take the boy out of the mountains, but you can't take yeah, the mountains out of the boy. Exactly right. Harlan, Bledsoe, whatever, you know, yeah. just got to get back to these mountains. Well, right. Mr. Napier, if you feel like it, let's go out here and look at this anvil and this water wheel. You put this wheel together Yeah. from scratch. It takes two pounds to turn the wheel. Two pounds to turn <coughs> two the wheel. Two pounds of water will turn it. <laughs> well, uh, let's yeah. go out here, folks, and take a look. Now, Mr. Napier is going to tell us how this little bitty anvil turned into this 6,500 pound anvil. Right. You want to tell us how you did that? We took a flashlight and put behind this, and on a dark wall, you could stretch it, make it bigger like a projection thing. So when we seen that would work, then we took this 199 pound one and done the same procedure. Then we put it on a big screen TV box or some kind of big box, you know. And then that gave me my template for the big anvil, yeah. yeah. So you made this anvil with your own hands? Well, you me did. and seven more welders. Seven more welders? And seven more welders. It yeah. took a few. <laughs> yeah. Well, they'd all quit on me. They'd get tired and quit, you know. <laughs> I'd, I'd give them about a month, and then I'd call, start calling them back, and they'd say, yep. well, we're out of money. We'll be over, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. They'd kind of have to run out of money before they'd come back again, you know. <laughs> but now we worked them all about seven hours a day. And uh, and then and then I'd go get them something to eat down at the restaurant. So we'd feed them and then pay them $100 a day for seven hours, you know, okay. which is about $15 an hour, you know. Yeah. And, and most of them done a real good job, real good, you know. Now, cutting out the anvil, we had two people that done that. The pieces to make it, it's a laminated, like wow. pieces of plywood. So we took a, we, we went through two tanks of oxygen a day, and uh, well, uh, no, five tanks of oxygen a day and two tanks of acetylene. So we went through the material. Wow. <laughs> and the dealer right then, he, a lot of times he'd just have one or two tanks. He'd say, buddy, I can let you have two, you know, and that's all I got, you know, so, yeah. <clears throat> But this one turns too, like that on the magnet here. <laughs> Did you know this anvil weighs 6,500 pounds? No kidding. That's right. And you know another thing? What? I can move it with one finger. You've been out in the sun too long, sweetie. Come sit down in the shade. <laughs> oh my goodness! So, what was you telling me that you had fixed on this that it would just go around by your, just touch your finger? Yeah, you can take your finger this. and push it right around okay, and around. I see this because you said oh, it's like 6,500. Yeah, we got to see this. So. <laughs> yeah. 6,500 pounds. 6,500. Watch this, folks. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. <laughs> Yeah. 6,500 pounds. You can move with one finger. That's made out of D9 counterweights. So they weighed a ton each before you done anything to them. And we had two real good torch men here that uh -huh. cut them down into the shape. And they all the time say, J.D., if we cut off too much, we'll weld her. I said, no, it costs too much money to put that back. I said, we've got it, let's not cut it off. Let's keep it because we're going to need it, you know. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's what it's made out of is bulldozer counterweights. Bulldozer counterweights. Now, wow. off the old D9G model. How did you, how did you come up with the idea to get this baby to spin around? Well, <laughs> one guy stopped here and I had it on a big jack. Uh -huh. and you just take your finger and move it any way you want to. He said, J.D., why don't you put a turntable on that thing? I oh, said, buddy, you just cost me a fortune, but I said, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so we wound up about $1,500 in that little turntable. So what's the turntable made out of? It's a big old, uh, we got a, a piece of steel about that big, about an inch thick, and burns it under it. Big old burns, huh? Big burns, yeah. It yeah. would have to be to hold this oh, yeah, big yeah. mama up. Yeah. <laughs> it's big, I'm telling you. The fellow that made that for me in a machine shop, 
-hmm. He said it'd probably hold up twice that much. We've had several motorcycle gangs like that went through here a while ago, uh -huh. pulled in and stopped, and some of the ladies got out and modeled on that thing. <laughs> I said, boy, I hope my wife don't stick her head out here right now. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I, 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 I hope she stays in the no, house. That's a good story. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's now, a good story. They would model, you know. I mean, yeah. they'd do shots, you know. <laughs> kind of glamour shots on that thing, you know. Wow. <laughs> Folks, yeah. you can feel that it's 6,500 pounds when you move it. It's <laughs> easy to move, but you can feel how heavy it is. Now, uh, you have tried to get this certified as the world's largest anvil right right so folks we we need to work on that man we need to get this anvil certified as the world's largest anvil because i don't think there is one larger we contacted guinnesses or friends of mine did and they wanted to come here and me me pay for motels their food and all that stuff you know oh yeah and, so and me to hire a truck that. to go get it weighed you know and bring it back and you know, run into about two thousand dollars what wow. they wanted to do or so more. You have to pay yeah. Guinness for doing that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now you put this water wheel together by a scratch here, didn't you? Yeah, you we said, put it together in pieces. In pieces. Yeah. Yeah, I was looking at the photo. Now it's you said it steel. took uh, two pounds of water to move. Two it. pounds of water will turn it right now, even. Now the water's coming out of the top up there, is it on it? Right, on the other side yeah. you can see Oh yeah, well, I'll go on the other side there. Look. It comes up that hollow there, 1,100 feet. Wow. Gravity fed. It falls 80 feet from the top of the dam, where it comes out of the dam, to down to here. And I surveyed that myself, yeah. <laughs> and I had to do it two or three times just to make sure I had it right, yeah. <laughs> you build this little cabin? We, we, uh, we had the timbers, uh -huh. like the timbers we got out there, I notched them in what's called the apple it's my half dovetail notch and then that little one i built for my mom and dad up there we done done a way better job on here here's the second one you know these are a start on the hole shanks that's what you make what? that's what we make the hole shanks with to hold the holes here yeah. there's one a little farther down the road <laughs> <laughs> as you can see i do one on each end that way we double production on stuff so when you got that when you got that fire going you got it real hot you got to hit it fast oh hit it fast yeah because it, it, it cools down real quick yeah oh. david made me this that's a little propane forge uh -huh. and it'll it'll melt still down i mean it does a terrific job so that was made sir david david made, made that, that and brought it over and gave it to me wow yeah, <laughs> yeah. david that that's Great. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, I said, man, I'll buy that. He said, no, you won't. I'm going to give it to you. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So now you're talking about uh, what I guess you'd call your apprentice, David Brock. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, now that's what he's going to be if we headed to Tennessee, you know, my apprentice. Yeah. Because that's kind of the way they wanted the yeah. master black yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and the helper or apprentice, you know. Kind yeah. Of. Just like you go to Dollywood right yeah. now, Sir Learville, you know. So yeah. this is uh, like your new propane one you're talking yeah, about yeah and, and uh, this got is three your, burners oh all right yeah and this is your like your old one you've that's used that's the old one you put the coal in oh so that's a cold one only wow. thing about the coal when you put it in there and start that far you can't stop and talk yeah you just have to keep right on yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and this, you build a far it's about five hour <laughs> deal and this, this year you can work two minutes, five minutes, five hours, whatever you want to. Wow. So this is your actual working anvil that you work That's on. That's the one right I work here. on. That's, That's a four hundred and two pound hay button. Wow. In nineteen eighty eight that thing was valued at uh twenty six hundred dollars. Four hundred and two pounds. Yeah, I don't know what it'd be valued now. But that's the man that wrote the book yeah. on my anvil. Do you know what you call a man that can pick up a 402 pound well, anvil? We, we've had two or three can pick that uh, up. Oh my sir, God. Yes, that's sir. what you call a man that can pick up a 400 pound <laughs> anvil, sir. You just call a man that you don't want to mess with. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's whole handle time when you come yeah. into that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how many garden hoes did you say you'd made? I made uh, 1,875 over the years. Wow. Well, Mr. Napier, you got a beautiful place here. Well, thank you, sir. Thank oh, and you. you do woodwork, too. We'll show some pictures of your bowls and stuff well, you made. Well, we haven't done that in quite a while. But you have done that. Quite a while, yeah. I was looking <clears> at those <throat> photos. They were incredible. Now, what's that? Is that the what you work with? Your steel yes. you work with That's there? the steel we work with. Yeah. 
There's a blade to the hole. All right. Wow. That's a little bitty one. And then here's one for the bigger ones, you know. Yeah. Yeah. If we come out thin a little bit, yeah. we just put a little blade on it. Oh. If it's real yeah. good and thick, then we put a heavy yeah. duty yeah. blade on it, you know. But now we've never had nobody to break one using it or what have you. They have run over them with a truck or something like that, that and, yeah, that and bro count. broke the handle off of them, that you know. Yeah. That ain't working. Yeah. So they last longer than Walmart holes. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Well, I know I've got people that's uh, had my holes. See, before I started counting, I've done several holes, and that's been 30, about 40 years ago, and there's people still got them holes. Wow. And they use them every year <laughs> in a garden. <laughs> yeah. So you like working with the... Uh, uh, Oh, guys, Ford, yeah. If you have a lot of company like that gang of motorcycles went through here, yeah. you can stop and talk to them, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> Where the other Ford, you can't hardly do that. Once you, just, you got your heat going in that, you got to Yeah, go you got to gotta stay with it, yeah. Got to stay with it. That's the one we do all the flattening out with. Oh, my. That's yeah. Pretty heavy. Oh, it'll wear you out now. Oh, yeah. Honey, I bet. Yeah. Get some muscles. Hammer sweetie. So this is what does the work. I gotta see you uh, using that hammer. So that's your hammer. Yeah. I bet you get some muscle. You ready to go to blacksmith school? <laughs> now actually, we've got a thirty-pound hammer in there too in the building. So this is the one that you do all your. Work all the on. blacksmith work on everything I do on it. Yeah. Wow. Except I do a little show out Pine Mountain or something. Then I take a smaller one. So you do go to the. Festival I do that sometimes. every now and then. Yeah, I'll go out there or something. You know. Wow. Yeah. But since then, they bought a whole bunch of anvils and stuff, so they set up pretty good now, you know. I wouldn't have to take nothing. Out. So they got it all ready for you. Just yeah, they take got your it, talent and go. Got it ready for it, <laughs> yeah. Hey, what is this that you've got wrapped up right here? That's a buffer. Once you buff it, bring a mirror smooth, finish on the steel. So it smooths yeah. everything yeah. down. Like the knives I make, when I want to bring a mirror finish on them, that's what I go to. So there's a lot of steps you, you to You put a compound on there uh -huh. and then turn it on and then it goes on to the... Smooth it out. Yeah. Smooth it out. Right, out. right. So what all kinds of steel do you use to make these things? What well, we make a lot of railroad spike knives. A lot of those. Yeah, there's a 30-pound hammer. Oh, there's a 30-pound yeah. hammer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. A 30-pound hammer. When we were beating on the anvil... The guys, I had seven of them here to help me beat on it. Yeah. They said, J.D., go in there and get the biggest hammer you got. I oh, drug that thing goodness. out. They grabbed it and hit two or three. They said, you don't put that up. We're going Now, if this home. thing was 29 and a half pounds lighter, <laughs> I'd be able to handle it for you. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you want to try that, sugar? Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> you don't? No, I'm good. We had a cousin. He, he and his wife dug graves for a living. Yeah. And she come by and grabbed that thing, picked it up like you oh, pick that little. Wow. I patted her. I said, I want to hire you to work for me. No she man. said, I can swing that thing a little bit. I said, I know you can. I'd right? <laughs> see you pick it up. <laughs> but if that don't send them Why home, nothing will. <laughs> Uh, I tell everybody to pick it up not to drop it on their toes because that'd be the end yeah. of the toes. Yeah. Yeah. Up there some old time tools. I, I was looking at right. that right there. There's What's edges. That? There's edges and draw knives up there that go back to 1700 and something. Right? Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Those big wide ones there. Yeah. Big wide edges. Yeah. And that draw knife right over there is about a 1785, uh, somewhere through there. Oh, wow. Yeah. And this act right here has got the date on it. It's 1837. That bottom one. Yeah, that bottom axle. Right? And now the top one is a broad axle. I've used it quite a bit. Wow. Uh, there's a hole that my grandfather made back in his days. That big wide one? Yeah. <laughs> uh, J.D., uh, what is this? Hmm. I looked up there. What is that? Right there? Yes. That's the thing they used around the little sawmills to get cats off, you know, yeah. and then cross ties. Yeah. Cross ties. It's you, got the hooks on You can get a man on each side of that and you can grab a cross tie and run with it, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, look here at the Pepsi plane. Yeah, my uncle made that, my Uncle Kelly. Yeah. Oh, he made hundreds of those things. 
He drove these festivals and yeah. sell them there for $40 yeah. a dollars or something a piece yeah. fast as he could yeah. bring them out. Yeah. yeah. J.D., you was telling us about Axel coming off of the coal truck and flying through Axel the Axel come off here. the coal truck. My daughters is just getting ready to come outside for the bus to catch the bus, so they've been standing right where that thing hit, you know. Right on in through there. Killed, the hit would have killed them now, I'm telling you. Wow. Because it's both back tires and the whole back end assembly. Wow. You know, man, I'm telling you. Well, it stopped clear down my dad's place, clear down there. Wow. That's where it actually rested. Wow. Well, it's, it, it's a miracle nobody got hurt Oh, with that. man, I'm telling you. Yeah. Scared me to death. I but bet I it did. I know my daughters are getting ready to get on that bus, you know, and oh, it scared me. That day we was on TV and everything. Yeah. Really? On Mountain right. News, yeah. On... Now, J.D. has been featured in the Harlan Daily Enterprise. Harlan Enterprise now. It was actually a daily paper then. And on Mountain News... Uh, trying to get this anvil certified as the world's record anvil, which looking at it, certainly it is. If there's a bigger one, please send us a picture of it. I'd like to see it and hear about yes. it. They are some bigger ones, but they hollow. Hollow. They oh. hollow. they not. not okay, the, not so the this real is McCoy. a solid That's anvil. Solid piece one end to the other. No so, hollow places in it. 6,500 pounds. So, yeah. So, if there is a bigger solid one that weighs more than this. <laughs> Let us know. Let us know. Because <laughs> uh, this should really be certified as, as the world's largest solid working. If it's solid, it'd be a working anvil if oh, you had yeah, to work yeah. it. Yeah. So, That's yeah, what this, we actually made it for, the work, yeah. you know. This is a working anvil. Two of my welders has passed away that I was wanting to get here yeah. and do an all-day thing with them or have dinner, you know, and yeah. everything. Yes, well, and wanting to feature them, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry about that. Wanting them. to salute them, you know, yeah. kind of. Yeah. But now their name is in that paper, oh, though. Their yeah. Names? Oh, yeah. Man. So all they right. are, they are all of them in that paper. Well, though. that's good. Uh -huh. And you said Mountain News interviewed you. Mountain News interviewed me. Yeah. We have had one or two people called from different places, Owensboro or somewhere down in there, yeah. wanted me to give them a price on it. And I said I'm. Well, a, I, I said I'm afraid to. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing stops it from being certified he tells us is the guinness people wanted their expenses covered they, they wanted a, a hotel yeah. room they wanted him to pay for the truck to take it and have it weighed did it weigh and it I, certified scales you'd have to go to the middle bro yeah. to do that well i challenge these people i know with all the books they sell the guinness book uh, 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 world records i know with all the books they sell i know with the money they have, they could cover the expenses themselves. I challenge them to come down here and certify this anvil. Yeah. Hey, Guinness, are you afraid of it? Is that what you are? Are you afraid of this anvil? Get down here and certify it. Well, J.D. is a blacksmith, but apparently nearby lives a carpenter. <laughs> Oh yeah, spring, motorcycles. Stop, I've uh, had them lined up yeah. here from one end to the other. Motorcycles. Yeah, stopped yeah. on the come over on the porch, talk with me. Yeah, Kinda several of them were welders. They said, "Man, if we'd know you've been doing this. We'd been over and wouldn't charge you a dime." You know, I said, "Oh." <laughs> so you get quite a few visitors. Uh, yeah. Just, uh, yeah, and also work. the missionaries. Yes. The missionaries that yeah. do work on houses. For the poor people and the elderly and stuff, yes. they stop by and here. And they bring their groups to Yeah, they bring their whole groups. They call me ahead. Well, so, J.D. would like to come visit you. Well, people want to see that big anvil, you know. Well. So, they call ahead. They, they. And now, all of them's Christian people. Yep. So, you know, they all pray with you. And yep. I said, if any of you all preachers, just go ahead and preach if you want to. You know? <laughs> well, that's wonderful. <laughs> oh, we've had people come Play here to, as a hillbilly as me, but they'd talk so proper, you know, they'd trip over their tongue, you know. You know, people's losing that accent. Yeah. They, they lo really are. Losing this Appalachian accent, you know. With all the computers and right. internet and everything, a lot of the new generation's losing the accent. My daughters like correct me pretty regular on these old time sayings, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, listen, if I don't do them, they're going to be lost forever, yeah, you know. It's sad, though. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a language to actually be proud yeah. of. You used to sit down, we call it, have your sock. Have your sock. Well, J.D., thanks for having us. We we actually came here and we got to talking to uh, oh, J.D. Yeah, on, just yeah. we, we kind of forgot we came to do well, video. Well, that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. Where, where yeah. we've done any yeah. videoing or not, that I wanted really it to be a good conversation of learning yeah. from each other. Yeah, we got to talking to him for about an hour and a half <laughs> and then remembered we were supposed to do a video. <laughs> yes. They're sitting on the porch. And folks, 
anybody uh, not from the mountains that, that's never visited on the porch, this is where people used to sit and how they used to visit when I was a kid here in these mountains. Uh, they'd come and they'd sit on the porch all day long, especially if they was coming from out of town coming in to visit. Right. Uh, uh, sit and talk. Somebody go and get, you know, if, if the kids was lucky and uh, they was poor like me, somebody go and get like a, a, a carton of a Coca-Cola. And when I say a carton of Coca-Cola, I mean the old wooden one oh, yeah. with, with the <laughs> bottles in it. Yeah. And everybody sat on the porch and... Uh, Good times, you know. I don't. I don't think people knows what they're missing now. Yeah. I really don't. Uh, I think my first quarter, I went to my aunt's place, and they had a little store, and her son gave me a quarter, and I drunk. I got me a couple of RCs and a knee high pop, maybe, and then there's this six cents each or a yeah. five cents, you yeah. know. And uh, I got sick on that. I drunk so much. <laughs> <laughs> and a candy bar. I got a big old oh, milky yeah. water candy yeah. bar or something. Oh, buddy. I've done that. Oh, is, I got is, plum sick. You go, yeah. Yeah, you go so long without it, yeah. and you finally get the money to get it, you're going to make yourself sick. Right, I couldn't. <laughs> I told him, I said, man, that's the most money I ate. He said, well, uh, that uh, you just take and get go in there and get what you want with it, you know. <laughs> yeah. well, we certainly have enjoyed that quarter day. looked like it's that big, you yeah. know. I tell you. Yeah. Well, you know, well, JD, it's been a pleasure talking with you. You're like an old friend. Well, I've enjoyed you all. Yep, you, you sit down. I feel like a stranger I at all. Sure. Uh, you sit down, and it's 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 like you sit down with an old friend. Well, sweetheart, did you like our visit with JD Napier? Harlan County's very own blacksmith here in Bledsoe. I didn't like it. I loved it. <laughs> you didn't like it? You loved it. Well, I did too. I want to tell y'all, uh, I have met maybe two or three people in my life that made me feel so welcome, so feist, and so at ease. You sit down on this man's porch, and in 30 seconds, you'll feel like you've known him for 30 years. He's so sweet. <laughs> yes, he is. He is. He's a knowledgeable man, and boy, I tell you, he tells some good mountain stories. He sure yes, does. He sure does. Uh, we appreciate you. Uh, for for inviting us to your home. Yeah, it's been an honor. Oh, it's it's a, it's an honor for us. Now, what do we say at the end of these videos, sweetheart? Bye. 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 Y'all come back now. Yeah. God bless y'all.